Hey guys, uh, it's me, Kid Rorik. Um, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I was in my local comic shop uh, about the middle of this week, picking up a brand new release I was uh, pretty excited about, when it dawned on me that I should do something completely original, never done before, ever, and do a video about my purchases. Uh, I'm not sure if this will be an ongoing thing, um, and it probably will only last as long as I like doing these, but so far, I really do like doing these. Well, this is the first one, but I've liked to do the process of doing this. Um, but yeah, as of right now, expect these to just pop up every now and again, because one, I don't really have a certain time or day that I go to my comic shop, and it's just whenever I really can. Uh, anyway, uh, on to the video. Uh, for this week, though, um, I'm going to be sharing everything that I got since I only got uh, three things. And each is going to be uh, an overview, like my thoughts on it, uh, followed by an overview, which will contain spoilers. And if you do not want any kind of spoilers, I will be providing a time code for each one after my over my thoughts on it. And you can go ahead and skip over the overview and skip all the spoilers if you don't want to be spoiled at all. All right. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the first comic we'll be looking at is The Fly Outbreak, Issue 1 from IDW. And this is a miniseries that's taking place after the uh, film The Fly 2. It was released just this Wednesday, and I was excited as soon as I heard about it, like, months ago. Uh, but initially, I kind of had some doubts about the first issue, like it would let me down a bit. But after going it through it twice for this review, I, I can't wait for the next issue. I'm very excited for this. The only problem I can see with um, other people trying to just jump onto this one would be a lack of understanding because of um, the events that happened in the films. So if you haven't seen like or even heard of the Fly films, this one definitely won't be for you. But if you have at least heard of it, you'll understand the basic concepts of this. But um, if you haven't seen the second one, which this uh, comic takes place directly, a not directly after, a couple years afterward... Uh, you won't really understand a little bit of it, but it's not too confusing. I haven't seen the second one completely all the way through, but I have watched some reviews, so I know a little bit about it. So I understood what was going on, basically. What I like about this issue is it takes place in a lab, so most of the uh, the styles of the drawings are like in a very dark tone. Like, even when there's should be like a full amount of light and it is a lit room, there's still all these like shadows in there that it just adds to the atmosphere um but the poor lighting doesn't take away from the story at all and isn't like extremely obnoxious so you shouldn't have any problems there because it does pull off a pretty good balance uh the creature of the story i think looks awesome uh, but i noticed throughout the issue it kind of like decreased in quality um but on a second reading, I realized this is probably because of the, it's representing the character's loss of sanity. It's seeing this thing that's just so far from human. Um, but overall, if uh, you're interested in the series, you might want to watch the films if you haven't. Or at least find some kind of review that will give you like the basic understanding of this. But I definitely would recommend this to anybody that's interested or even is a fan already of the Fly series. This series takes place uh, years after the events of the Fly 2 movie and opens with our protagonist, Martin Brundle, trying to reverse the effects of the telepod on his father figure, Anton. After another failed attempt, it's revealed that Martin is now married to Beth, his love interest from the film, and Beth wants kids, but Martin is afraid that he's going to somehow infect her with his fly genes that the way that he got infected from his actual father, Seth Brundle, from the first Fly movie. Uh, the next day, after the experiment, a scientist goes into Anton's room and discovers this husk. Uh, calling for security, a now metamorphosis and kind of different mutated kind of Anton fly pukes his digestive acids on the scientist and that kills him. Martin is now aware that an experiment that was meant to cure him has now made him into this new kind of creature. He wants to go out and find this Anton fly and he, he knows he has to stop him. Before he can leave, Antonfly has actually tracked him down, 
and accuses him of making him into this monster. And Anton Fly tries to kill everybody in the room with more of his like digestive acid things. But um, Martin uses this extinguisher, and that uh, dulls the effects of the acid so nobody dies. And this leads to Anton Fly chasing Martin down this hallway, and Martin runs into the security team that uh, shoots the Anton Fly dead. Um, but even though this creature is dead, the scientists and military groups that are there fear that some kind of transgenic disease could possibly spread from this and that everybody could in be infected. So the issue ends with Martin and his team being put into uh, this quarantine facility for a as of yet unknown amount of time uh, to prevent the spread of any kind of possible infection they may have. Before we start this next one, uh, yes, this is going to be issue two, but I uh, do plan on getting the first issue just uh, when I was there at my comic shop. They didn't have that one uh, available at that point, I think, so um, I will be getting that one as soon as possible. But the second comic we will be looking at today is Orphan Black, issue two, which focuses on the character Helena. This is another series from IDW, and uh, this comic book comic book adaptation takes the clones from the TV show Orphan Black and tells each of the clones backstories. Uh, I've only seen bits and pieces of this show and I've wanted to start it for a while but I never really got around to it but with this adaptation it's kind of finally pushing me to get off my ass and watch the show because I really do have an interest in it. Uh, but I was mainly drawn to the series uh, as soon as I realized the main actress was Tatiana Meslani who played Ghost from uh, Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed, and that's a film favorite of mine. Uh, but after viewing the show, uh, the idea of the group of simil similar yet different clones coming together to face like a common enemy uh, has really convinced me that this is the perfect thing for me, so I should probably watch that as soon as possible. Uh, this issue focuses on, again, the clone Helena, who is the most unstable of the group, and from what I've seen from the show, she's a character that has a very questionable background and suffers from severe abuse from the people that she has seen before, like figures of her past, and her own sense of self-abuse. Like, for example, in the issue, she like cuts herself for failing to find and kill this one person, and in a flashback, it shows that she was abused very, like, severely because she didn't want to kill this dog. What this series successfully does is gives a deeper understanding of the universe's characters through their own personal thoughts and showing like how they were brought up and their own kind of personal reactions, like their way that they express themselves. Uh, the art of this of the issues does a great job of differentiating from the characters because most of them do look very similar to each other. But there's always like these unique traits or way that you can see that this one is different from this one because this one may have like a different kind of hairstyle or just a way that that one would think like compared to the other one. And I think that's really a commendable thing that helps to make the story uh, way easier to follow. I highly suggest you watch the show before you try and start reading this because the comics do contain a few spoilers, so um, you don't want to get spoiled, you better watch the show first. But overall, this is a very good and worthy adaptation and extension of the show. This issue starts out with Helena going through this vigorous training exercises, uh, training her to become a killer. Here we also learn of her deep and twisted kind of religious background. Uh, but when she refuses to kill this dog, she's thrown in this well, where we learn that she has this imaginary guide and friend in her head named Pupak, who is a scorpion. He encourages Helena by saying that one day she'll get a stinger and be able to take her revenge. After this, a girl named Maggie gets Helena out of the well and gives her some food. Cutting to ten years later, Helena is raiding another clone's room looking for something. We don't know what, really. It's probably explained in the show, but for this comic, I, I couldn't figure it out. But after failing to find her objective, we cut back to another flashback of Helena being viciously beaten, only to have Maggie persuade her tormentor, uh, whose name is Thomas, uh, not to damage their soldier anymore. Maggie, having become close friends with Helena, gives her this knife as a gift, claiming that Helena is their salvation. 
Back in the present, another clone has entered the room with Helena, where she was looking for this object. And she's about to kill this other clone, but more people enter the room and she's forced to retreat. She later tries to kill another clone named Beth Childs for some unknown reason, but when she's finally about to just outright kill her, it's revealed that this Beth uh, killed her friend Maggie. And before Helena can shoot this Beth, Beth is like, I'm not the real Beth. And she's leading on that she's another clone. She's not the real Beth, so... And this catches Helena off guard long enough for this Beth to stab her and she gets away. Uh, as Helena treats her wounds, she resolves to go into the police department where Beth Childs works. And she takes evidence about uh, her killings that she's done while she's been there. And as a final thing, she arranges the pictures of the crime scenes into a body as a warning to Beth, like, stop. Uh, the issue ends with another clone, Allison, beginning her tale. The final comic that uh, we'll be going through is a six-part series called Wolf Moon, and it's from Vertigo. And unlike the other two, uh, this one is not based off of any kind of movie or show. It's his own thing. And uh, the only thing you may need to understand is the basic concept of a werewolf, and that's not going to be too hard. Uh, in this comic, though, the origin of like how a werewolf is formed is a bit different. It's not from any kind of disease, bite, or scratch. Uh, every full moon, according to this, every full moon, the werewolf just transfers to a new, new host at random. It just happens. It's not through any kind of physical means. And I like this new point of view, and it's it's not just the same thing that you would expect from any kind of regular... Uh, a comic book that's based around lycanthropes, and I kind of enjoyed that. Uh, the first issue uh, mainly focuses on the protagonist, Dylan, in his quest for revenge and how this thing has ruined his life completely. And this sounds like the typical revenge story, and it's going to be the same thing, but the writers put enough of a twist on it to kind of make you question, and ha you have to assume a lot of things about it. Because the first issue does not give you all the answers. You have to kind of assume and try and like guess what's going to happen. And it's good enough to keep you guessing, like, to want to try and get to the next issue, like, to figure out what's happening. It should be noted that this one contains a pretty decent amount of gore and a good part of language, bad language in there. So if any of that it bothers you, this one will not be for you. <laughs> Not at all. That being said, the art definitely complements the bloody scenes that are portrayed throughout this entire thing. And I like how they drew the creature. It really makes it feel like it's like you are going to be attacked by this thing. Like you are going to see this thing in your nightmares. It feels like that. And it's really nice. I like how it does it just does it it's awesome. I love it. And it just really fits with what you'd expect from this story. Overall, just any kind of gore language that you would think that it'll affect you, just it's not for you. But if you want to see like a new, if you want to see a new kind of twist on like lycanthrope legends, this is definitely for you. This issue opens with three hunters finding the werewolf that quickly rips them to shreds. Cutting to our protagonist, Dylan, he prepares to leave as he has seen the reports of the recent attacks and has reason to believe it's the creature that he's been looking for and just wants to kill. His friend and possible lover, Casey, tries to convince Dylan to stay, but he's dead set that he has to destroy this thing once and for all. Going back to a diner that's near where the opening attack happened, we find the current host of the beast named Kyle about to transform in this bathroom. When he does, numerous people are slaughtered. In the middle of the beast's rampage, though, Dylan arrives and hits the thing with his truck. Uh, Dylan thinks, as he's doing this, the creature looks at him, and Dylan thinks that he, the thing actually recognizes him. And he tries to shoot it, and he does. He manages to get a good hit on it, but it's not enough. As he's going to shoot again, he hesitates, and he doesn't do it, and it gets away. Uh, 
at dawn, Dylan has to start back at square one because after each full moon, a new host at random is selected, so he has no idea where it is now. It is also confirmed uh, through flashbacks that Dylan was a previous host to this monster, and that caused him to kill his family as a result. Uh, the next day, Dylan calls Casey to tell him he won't be coming back for a while, if ever. Meanwhile, the former host, Kyle, has been abducted by some mysterious figure. And the issue ends with uh, us seeing Kyle's body just laid out on this bed. He's completely gutted, and the mysterious figure has like taken all of his organs and put them into these jars, and we don't know why that happened at all, but it will be revealed in the next issue, of course. Thank you to everyone for watching. Uh, this is my first video dealing with comics, so please leave a comment uh, that'll help me improve these if you want to see more, or just to say, hey, I like this. Uh, I will be continuing all the series I've mentioned in this video. All of these I'm definitely going to continue. And I may continue uh, to do more comic videos. It's just not going to be as often as I do gaming videos uh, because I listed reasons in the opening. <laughs> Go back to the opening if you missed it. Again, thank you to everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope I make another one. I'm pretty sure I will, but you never know. Bye.